him welcome to Wednesday night Bible study. We came to praise the Lord on tonight, but he's worthy to be praised. Come on and put your hands together.
Welcome to our Wednesday night empowerment service. We are so glad that you are tuning in to us tonight, and we pray that our service be a blessing to you and to others. So please go ahead, like, love, and share. And if this is your first time connecting with us, type connect in the comments. We would love to connect with you. Our interactive Bible study classes are held each Sunday morning at 9 a.m. Classes range from adults, teens, preteens, and primary classes. Join us to engage to deepen our understanding of the Bible. Breakfast can be purchased at our admin building before and after the service. Visit our Exodus Christian Bookstore after service to pick up your favorite book, a gift, or even a snack. Tune in weekdays at 12 noon on all social media platforms for our Be Inspired in Five to hear inspirational nuggets from our leaders here at Tabernacle Praise to push you throughout your day. Announcements. This Tuesday, October the 4th at 7 p.m., pastor will officiate a one-night revival at Greater New Beginnings Church where Pastor Tommy Jones is the pastor. Are you looking to purchase a home? Join Psalm Books Ministry on Tuesday, October the 6th at 6 p.m. and Saturday, October the 22nd at 10 a.m. for a home ownership seminar here on our campus at the admin building adjacent to other building. On Wednesday, October the 12th, the elect lady of this house will bring the word during the AIA conference at 7 p.m. at New Zion Bible Way Church. Save the date. AIA installation service will be held on Saturday, October the 15th, and Tabernacle of Praise Ministries will be ministering. Join Pastor and First Lady Henderson for a birthday celebration and anniversary celebration honoring Mother and Father Henderson on October the 15th, right here in the Life Center, immediately following the service. Mother Henderson will be 86 years old and celebrating 66 years of marriage. A special thank you to everyone who made our annual community day a great success. We couldn't have done it without you. More than 200 community members, leaders, and our members attended. They received food, gifts, items, and most of all, we had great fellowship. We couldn't have done it without you. So thank you for liking, loving, and sharing all about Tabernacle Praise Ministries. For those of who would like to give, there are six ways that can be given. Please look at our monitors. You can give whether in person, online, via mail, cash out. Thank you for sowing the seeds for a Tabernacle of Praise Ministry to do what we do. Stay connected with us on Facebook and YouTube. Watch us every Sunday morning at 10 a.m. and Wednesday nights at 6.30 p.m. Thank you again for tuning in and enjoy the service. Praise God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to your name, God. Welcome to our midweek service. We are thankful that you have John, John, decided to join us on this evening by way of either YouTube Live or Facebook Live. We are so glad that you have decided to connect with us on this evening. Hallelujah. We know that God has great things in store for us. This is the Tabernacle of Praise Ministries. I am Elder Tamika Johnson, and I am just elated to bring the word unto you tonight. 
I pray that it is a blessing. I pray that your heart is enriched as the wisdom of the word of God goes forth on tonight. We have a magnificent um, word from God on today. And we also have magnificent leaders at the Tabernacle of Praise Ministries. Hallelujah. None other than the angels of this house, Apostle Lea Henderson and Elder Mona Henderson. Amen. They lead us in the way in the direction of the Lord. And we can so gladly follow because we know that they are following us in the right direction. Amen. We also have our assistant pastors, Elder Perry, Elder James Perry, and Lady Joyce Perry. We are so glad to have that connection with such great leaders. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord God. And to my best friend, my husband, Elder Tony Johnson, I'm thankful unto, for you on tonight. Thank you, Lord God. Let's pray. Father God, in the name of Jesus. Lord God, we are thankful, Lord God, for you on this evening. God, I praise and I magnify your name, Lord God. I pray, Lord God, that the wisdom of your word, God, it leads and it guides us on tonight, Lord God. God, I pray that I decrease, God, and that the spirit of God, hallelujah, that it may increase, God, on tonight. God, humble me, Lord God, in the name of Jesus, that I may hear from you, Lord God, that I speak what you tell me to speak, hallelujah, that I hear what I need to hear, in the name of Jesus, and God, we pray that it is blessed, God, and that it is sanctioned by the word of God. We give you praise, we give you glory, and we honor you on tonight. For Father God, you are worthy to be praised. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. We're going to go quickly in the word of God. I won't take long at all. First scripture we're coming from, 1 Corinthians 9, 24 through 25 as Paul is speaking on tonight know ye not that they which run in a race run all but one receiveth the prize so Paul is conveying them so run that ye may obtain and every man that striveth for the mastery is temperate in all things now they do it to obtain a corruptible crown, but we an incorruptible. The Olympics are considered the world's foremost sports competition. It is a series of international athletic contests held as separate winter and summer events in a different country every four years. It showcases the best of the best from every country that participates. Not only have they trained meticulously to get there, but once they're there, they still have to, in certain games, they still have to qualify. Still in order to prove their worthiness as to why they're there. It is the experience of a lifetime for some. Paul here is connecting the dots to the church of Corinth. He is bringing together religious Jews, and he's bringing outsiders, the Gentiles, together. And he's jailing them to work together and to not lose focus as to how they came to be, how they came to the Lord and how their lives have been transformed. And he's trying to get them to stay on the same page and to not lose sight of what is going on, to stay focused. Paul knows who he is, and he knows that he has himself been set for the defense of the gospel. And having been set for the defense of the gospel, he goes about making the right connections, showing the agape love of Christ. He's a servant, and he has a servant's heart and willing to do whatever it takes to save some. He became what was needed in that moment. What was needed to edify for the furtherance of the gospel. And as I was reading this story and putting together the title of the message and how God wanted me to go about on this evening, as I was reading Paul's letters to the Corinth, 
and how he was just showcasing the love of God. And he's telling them, hey, we got to work together in this. I thought about the inauguration of 2021. And there was a young lady that stood at the podium and she spoke. Her name was Amanda Gorman. And she talked about the state of the country, this nation, our history. And her poem that was titled, The Hill We Climb. As she spoke on that history, she said that we witness a nation that is broken but unfinished. And that is the state of many of God's people tonight. But I want you to know that God can fill the void of that brokenness and he can fill the void of what is unfinished in your life. That's the state of many. Hallelujah. But God comes to make us whole. He comes to give us a new life. For this word says, I have come that you, have, that you may have life and that you may have life more abundantly. So she says that this is a nation that is broken, that isn't broken, but it's unfinished. Hallelujah. The thing we are most consistent in, we pretty much were master. Whatever the consistency level is of that thing we're involved in, it produces a desired end result for us. And for the most part, it's good because we have continuously put in the time, put in the training for whatever our eyes, for whatever we set our eyesight on that we want to go after, we have trained in that field. So whatever we are consistent in, we will pretty much master that thing. The scripture in Psalms says, Psalms 1, it says, Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law doth he meditate day and night. And he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bring forth fruit in his season. His leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he does, he shall prosper. My mind or my eyes fell on the word, his delight, meaning that I'm taking great pleasure in what God is speaking to me. His delight is in the law of the Lord. His delight is in what God is speaking out to us. And we're taking pleasure in the word of God. It must, if we must get excited about anything, it should be what God's word says to us how God is making us and how God is molding us, how God is turning our lives from what it used to be to a perfect life in him, a life that he has mapped out for each of us. When we delight in his word, when we delight in what his word says to us and of us, we can take pleasure in that. God has been good to me. And pastor touched on this on last Sunday. I can categorically say that Jesus is the best thing that has ever happened to me. I've been blessed to see his working power with my own eyes. And you know, when you see things that come out of your own eyes, can't nobody tell you anything different because I have seen it. I have witnessed it. So I know what God can do because I've seen it. Hallelujah. I've seen God take a person that is near death and turn them around and bring them up out of a bed of affliction. Hallelujah. And now they are yet still living and walking and breathing today on a ventilator for 21 days. But God. But God. Jesus is the best thing that has ever happened to me. And I owe God. I owe God all of me. I owe it to him. I owe him my life for the rest of my life. Because what does he do? He calms my fears. 
He gives me peace to weather the storms that arises. When folk don't get me or don't understand me, God says that I created you and that you were fearfully and that you were wonderfully made in my image. Hallelujah. So for those that are out there and people don't understand you and people want to discard you off and people want to say that you'll never amount to nothing, don't discard what God can do in your life. Hallelujah. Just take a step back. Just take a step back. Breathe. Breathe. And allow the spirit of God to minister to your every need. Because God wants to be the defense that's in your life. Hallelujah. God wants to take what you're in now, turn it around, settle you in the spirit, and make something great out of you. Hallelujah. But you can't just stay there in that moment that you're in. You got to come up out of it. By some means that is necessary. You can't stay there. And we have those bouts and we have those moments that we go through. We have those human moments because we are humans. But we don't stay in that attraction. Hallelujah. We rise up out of it. Hallelujah. Because there is a time and a season for that. But we don't stay in that season of sadness. We don't stay in that season of despair. We rise up out of that. For the Bible says to set your affections on things above. We got to look to Jesus and what he says of us and allow that to fuel your life and allow that to build you up on your most holy sanctification, on your most holy word, on God's word. Allow the word of God to build you up. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. God wants to liberate us. And not only does he want to liberate us, he has stood in the gap for us and stood in our stead. And he paid for our freedom with his own blood just think about that he paid for our freedom so the we so that we can be liberated hallelujah from religiosity and from from things from church hurt from whatever the situation is that wants to keep us in despair whatever that stronghold is whatever the situation or circumstance is God has already made provisions for that he has already appropriated everything that you would ever go through in this life and he has made a way for you to escape it if need be so that you won't succumb under the pressure, so that you won't succumb under all that is over you. God has made a way for you to escape. But in order for us to escape it, we got to be in him so that we can experience his power. We got to be in him so that we can experience the agape love of God and to know that he still loves us despite of what we go through. And I know that people have gone through some horrific stuff in their lives. But for, if you could just for a moment realize that God has always been there every step of the way. And the Bible says that he must come, that comes to God, must first believe that he is. So what does that say? That says that in order to get anything from God, I must believe in him. I must believe in him. I met a 22-year-old. And this 22-year-old told me that he did not believe in God. And I thought that I said, my God, he haven't even lived long enough to experience a lot of what life is going to give him. And then the Bible, as I went back to my office, this is when I was working in, in, in office. And as I went back to my office and I sat there because it so troubled me, it really troubled me that he didn't believe God and he wanted me to change the religion sect on his paperwork. And I said, my God, and the spirit of God came to me in my office and he says, I can't do anything for someone that doesn't believe in me because he that comes to me must first believe that I am in order for me to help them out of whatever it is that they're in. So I am thankful for the grace. And I began to pray in that office that God from his lifetime, God, I pray that your grace continues to cover him, hallelujah, so that he finds out in life that he needs a savior, so that he needs the hand of the everlasting God. For there is salvation in none other. Salvation is in no other name but the name of of Jesus, whereby we are saved. And so I am thankful that the word of God comes so plain to us and to tell us what it is that is needed. 
And though after we know that he is who he is and that he is a rewarder of them that will diligently go after and seek him, then he can start drawing us to him so that we can gain the attention of him and come to him and be saved. He starts to draw us to him. Praise God. I'm thankful, Lord God, for your many blessings that you have for your people. Hallelujah. He paid and brought our freedom, liberated us with his own blood. And for that, not just I, but we all owe God our lives because he first loved us with an everlasting, eternal love. And has given us everything we need to walk and make it in this life and live out our experiences. For the Lord is my shepherd and my confidence. He is the strength of my life. Hallelujah. Not only is he the strength of my life, but he's the strength of your life as well. If you are in Christ, he's the strength of your life also. And we are thankful, hallelujah, unto God, because he is a promise keeper. He is Jeremiah's fire, and he is Ezekiel's wheel. He is Moses' rod. He is the fire of furnace. He is my joy. And David said, like no other. David said, when my heart is overwhelmed, when my heart is overwhelmed, I can go to the rock. He says, lead me to the rock that is higher than I. And we know that the rock is Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. That rock is Christ. He is the chief cornerstone. He is my deliverer. He is my savior. And not only is he all of that, but he is our soon coming king. Hallelujah. God's word is historic and it is prophetic. Historic in the sense that we can look back through the lens of the word of God and it speaks of its own divine origin from the creation up until now. It is spiritual because Jesus says that the words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. Hallelujah. The Bible declares that the words are spirit and they are life. Prophetic in that it foretells of things that must come. It lets us know throughout the pages of the Bible of what we are seeing now being played out all over the country, all over the nation. We're able to see that through the lens of the word of God. So make no mistake about it. God is not going to lead us to a place that he can't keep us. And now God is not going to bring us into something that we don't know anything about. But he tells of things to come so that we can trust what is in the word of God. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Thank you, Jesus. He is still our God and we are still his people. If we have been washed in the bo- we have been washed and born of the Spirit of God. Hallelujah. The Bible speaks of a falling away before the coming of the Lord. But if we remain consistent in what God tells us to do in his word, that doesn't mean that you or I have to be that one that falls away. Consistent means acting or done in the same way over time, especially so as to be fair or accurate. Consistent also is unchanging in nature, standard, or effect over time. Consistency is conformity to everything that I just read about consistent. It is conformity in the application of something, typically that which is necessary for the sake of logic, accuracy, or whatever is fairness. So we must come in in our life with God. We have to remain vigilant. We have to remain consistent in what the word of God tells us to do. So that when we see these perilous times come upon us, we don't faint as if we don't have any hope. Because the word of God has already told us that these things must come to pass. So we have to get rooted and anchored in the word of God. And stay connected to the word of God. 
so that we don't lose sight. Because I am in a time that I don't want to miss what God is saying in this hour. I don't want to miss when he's speaking. I don't want to miss when he's, what he's doing. I don't want to miss the flow of the spirit. I don't want to miss when he comes down to visit us. Hallelujah. When he sets on each of us, when he goes down and walks through the aisle, I don't want to miss what God is delivering as a corporate anointing. I don't want to miss it. So we have to stay connected to what God is doing in this hour. We have to stay connected to the men and women of God, to our pastors, to our leaders, so that they can continue to lead us in the way that God is showing them to lead. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord God. You know I have to be one that falls away because we have the good news of this Bible as our guide. The gospel of Jesus Christ. And I am confident in God's ability to keep us. The Bible tells me that in Numbers that God is not a man that he should lie. Neither the son of man that he should repent for anything. And what I know and why I can follow this is because the Bible is right. And every word of God is true. And God is for me. And not only is he for me, but God is for you as well. If you're out there and if you are listening, God is for you also. Because he doesn't want to see anyone lost. He doesn't want to see all of this word that is going forth now across the nation, all of this spiritual aspect of God that is being delivered. God wants us to catch a hope to that word, to fall in love with that word, to endure what it's telling us to do, to be like a heart of a student, always willing to learn, always willing to take in what is coming from the word of God, that it is true. Because we have to be in a Bible-based church that is teaching and preaching us the word of God. Because there is salvation in no other name but the name of Jesus Christ. So if anyone is telling you anything that you can skate by, that you can get by under any other name, then they are not telling you the truth. For this Bible tells me that salvation is in no other name. And that that is a name that has been given that is above every name. And that at the name of Jesus, everything bows to that name. And so Jesus is who we lead our lives after. Jesus is the rock on which we can follow. We follow the rock of Jesus Christ. Satan's plan is to keep us out of the word of God. Why? Because knowledge, first of all, is power. The power of the word of God is transformative. The power of the word of God is transformative. There may be many circumstances that we are go about in life that we find ourselves in that may fail us or maybe we have put our trust into uncertain things hallelujah we are not immune to what happens in this life but this gospel here it won't fail you for the bible says that the word of god is quick and it is powerful And it is sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit, joints and marrow. And it is a discerner of the thoughts and the intents of the heart. And so what that basically says is that God's word is true. Whatever you're going through and whatever you're facing, God has an answer for it, and it's in the word of God. God has given us power to overcome every situation that we're in. We may not come out of it right away, but we have the grace of God that he's going to take us through. And then once we come out of that trial and that we've learned whatever the lesson is that God wants us to learn, then we move on. But God has given us great power to sustain us in this time. God has given us an anointing to walk through whatever it is that we're in. So don't discard what God has placed in your life. Don't discard the very first love that you felt when you came to the Lord. That first love. When God touched your heart, when God called you out of whatever you were in, and he placed in you himself. And he told you that I can make out of you what you've been trying to do for years. I can bless your life. I can prosper you. I can give you everything that you need for the kingdom of God. I want you to settle yourself in me and allow God to move in your heart. This word of God is true. 
For the word of God is quick. It is able to make alive the things in your life. It is able to go through every dead cell and quicken you in the name of Jesus and bring life back into you so that you hear what the spirit of God is saying unto you. God's word is alive. Hallelujah. The spirit of God is alive through the words that we read. Hallelujah. In the word of God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. I challenge you on this evening to give God a try. No one can come unto, no one can tell you how much of God you can have. And that's the beauty about God. The more you want of him, the more you can have. The more you seek, the more he will supply. The more you reach out to him, the more he will give you. When you knock, the door will be open unto you. When you ask, he will give. When you look to Jesus, he will supply all of what you need. No one can tell you of how much of God you can have. The more you want, you go after God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. The wisdom of God's word gives insight. It builds you up. It settles and it will establish your going so that you find yourself in the perfect will and purpose of God. Every step, every dream, every endeavor is still achievable. So don't discard what God can make good in your life. Because God's love is consistent, it's eternal, and it is forever. For the Bible says that he is the way, he is the truth, he is the life, for he is the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. Hallelujah. I praise God on this evening, and I pray that something was said that will edify you. Hallelujah. That will build you up, because it is my aim to speak into your life so that you go to the Bible and you find out what it says about you, that you find yourself every day consistently searching the Scripture and seeing what the Word of God is saying unto you, that he gives us our daily bread, and he gives it to us every day. So don't discard what God can do in your life. God can take the beauty for ashes. God can turn your situation around. God can make out of you what you can only dream of if you give God a try. Right now, wherever you are, if you're standing in your living room, wherever you may be, if you would throw up your hands and say, Father God, like Pastor preached on this past Sunday, Father God, I need your help. I can't make it in this life without you, but God, I need you right now in my life. I need you to turn some situations around in my life. I need you to work some things out in me, Lord God, so that I can walk and be blessed in you, Lord God, so that I can move in the direction you want me to go, so that I won't follow after strange gods, but I will follow after the true and the living God, the one that can turn my life around, the one that can build me up. Hallelujah. God came to change your life. God comes to make out of you newness. God came to build you up and settle you. God came to let you know that he has always been there. Sometimes we go through things and we feel like, well, God, where are you? He's there. But sometimes the things that we go through, they cloud us to where we can't hear, we can't see, we can't feel God. Hallelujah. And those are emotions. Those are the the, uh, things that we go through. But God is a spirit. And if we want to get in the spirit realm so that we hear from God, we got to allow the spirit of God to move us. We got to get in that place in God. We got to get in that closet. We got to go to where God is there. The God of Shama, the God that is there. Hallelujah. God wants to take your life and make something good out of it. He wants to transform you. He wants to save you most of all so that at the end of your life, you can be secured in the fact that I belong to God for he is my God. He is my savior and I gave my life to him years ago and he has promised to keep me. For he said, I'll never leave you nor forsake me. Lo, I will be with you always. For the Bible says that I've never seen the righteous forsaken, nor the seed beg and break. God will be everything that you need if you only give him a try. Hallelujah. I am thankful on this evening. I pray that the words of God have touched your heart. 
I pray that you have benefited from the word of God on tonight. I'm going to ask that those that need salvation on this, uh, on this night, hallelujah, if you feel that you need to be saved, if you are in a backsliding condition, hallelujah, if you have said that I'm going to step away from God for a minute and do my own thing, I adjure you by the power of God that you take that moment and turn your life back to God. Because Jesus is, will be the very best thing that will ever happen to you. Because what you're seeking for, the void that is missing in your life, it's Jesus. And he wants to fill that void. He wants to put a smile on your face. Hallelujah. And he wants to let you know that I am here and I'm everything that you need. Father God, in the name of Jesus, Lord God. God, those hearts and soul, Lord God, that are ready to receive you, Lord God. God, I pray that they are ministered to by the angels of God. Father God, as they confess their faults to you, Lord God, as they say to you in this hour and in this time, Father God, I need you, Lord God. God, I have been in some things. I've done some things, Lord God, and I pray that you would take the very thing that I've done, Lord God. Forgive me, Father, for everything that I've done, everything that I've said, what was not pleasing in your sight, Lord God. Create in me a clean heart, Lord God, and renew in me a right spirit, Lord God. Father God, I come to you, Lord God, like an empty pitcher before a full fountain, Lord God, and I ask that you would fill me, Lord God. Take away, Lord God, everything that I've done, Lord God. Turn my heart around, Lord God. God, I come to you, Lord God, and I ask that you would fill me, Lord God, with what I need in the name of Jesus. God, set me on a course, Lord God, that is undeniable in you, Lord God, that I can live, that I can move, Lord God, in you, Lord God, knowing that you are the righteous God. Hallelujah, Lord God. Forgive me, Father. Forgive me, Father. I confess you as my Lord and as my Savior right now in the name of Jesus. And God, I pray that you will come in my heart, Lord God. Change me from the inside out, Lord God. Renew in me once again a right spirit, Lord God. And God, I pray I will give you my life, Father God, for the rest of my life. In the name of Lord Jesus, we give you praise, glory, and honor. Hallelujah. If that is you on tonight, we ask that you will connect with this great church. We have leaders that will reach out to you. And we're wanting you to be saved. We're wanting you to come, hallelujah, Lord God, so that you can be filled, so that you can get fed, hallelujah, so that God can continue to pour into you. So we ask that you would connect with us, if you don't mind, so that God can continue to make that, way, that pathway plain in your life in the name of Jesus. We give you praise, we give you glory, and we give you honor. And we are thankful on tonight. Hallelujah, Jesus. Thank you, Lord God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Well, we're going to move to another phase of this service. Hallelujah. It is giving time. It's time to give God our best. Hallelujah. And for those that are giving on this evening, as you search your hearts and as you ask God, what will he have you to give on tonight? I ask that you will get that seed in your hand. Hallelujah. For we know God will supply all of our needs according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. And we know God will give us everything that we need, Lord God. He will bless that that we put our hands to do. And so as you would hold that seed offering up, God, we ask that you would take that seed, Lord God, and that you would stretch it, Lord God. That you would bless God their want to in the name of Jesus. That you would give it back to them a hundredfold, Lord God. And that you would move in their life as this. Sow this seed on good ground, Lord. We know that they will reap a harvest in the name of Jesus. And the Tabernacle of Praise Ministry, it is good ground. And we are thankful for your seed on this evening. There are six ways to give that is on the screen. Look at those six ways and determine how you are willing to give on this evening. We are thankful that you have tuned in tonight. We pray that the message has been a blessing to you. And we look forward to seeing, hopefully seeing you or um, seeing your comments or, or likes. We're looking forward to seeing you in our very next service on Sunday. To God be the glory for all that he has done. We ask that God continue to richly bless your life as you go about your week. In the name of the Lord Jesus, be blessed. Amen.